Colin Thomas is here from Essential Maintenance, and we will fix it Dubai. We're going to be talking DIY, and in this episode, we're talking containers. Yes! It's it's the buzz. Everyone's talking containers. Tiny home containers, storage in your yard containers, doghouse containers for the, the guys who are in the doghouse, and much, much more. Every, Everywhere you look, and we've, in fact, we've had Box Park Container Park here in Dubai for a long time. A variety of containers that have been some just for facades, some actually being used. But c- containers are everywhere. The question is, are they there for you? And if there's one person who's used these extensively, it's Colin Thomas. So you're the man to walk us through some of these issues and help people to get their minds flowing. I absolutely love containers. There right. That's it. You see, that's that's it. I love containers. But they're, they're just genius. Why? Why do you love them? I love the... Uh, there's so many different aspects to it, but w- where it all starts off is what they are, okay? Mm. Which is standardized, ridiculously over-engineered, strong, and capable, you know? Yeah. And that's the amazing thing about them. I mean, you talk about the, the expert in them, but I, I started in 2008. When we started Jim Will Fix It back in those days, I was pitching pretty much from day one. So if you remember, that was literally just at the stage where um, the crash hadn't fully happened yet. Yeah, and there were plenty of businesses that were doing really well. But the big problem was we still had the ridiculously high rents yes. th- at that stage. And so I was getting literally people saying, I'm running out of space. What, <laughs> what can you do to give me space? And every time I go, just get a container. Here's one I, pr- I proposed last week. But the problem was that they just, it seemed like a step too far for a lot of people. What do you mean step too far? They thought that it was a complex thing to put together. Mm. And as a result, they didn't go for it. And instead, they'd almost always go for, um, you know, a prefab, a porter cabin instead yeah, that yeah, was yeah. cheaper and would fall apart, you know, within, oh God, if you get three years out of a porter cabin in this environment, you're doing really well. Whereas three years later, it might be a little bit rusty and we'll get into that. But you have all of this, the the structural rigidity and, you know, in many respects, with a tiny, tiny little bit of maintenance, it'll look exactly the same three years later. Mm. So I absolutely loved it. Oddly enough, um, I proposed it that many times that in the end, I bought one myself <laughs> and made it, well, actually, I, I kind of customised the whole thing and made it into in my last property. Um, that was our pergola. Right. Uh, that we convert into various different things. It started off as um, like a, a high bar seating for 10. Uh, we then took that out and then made it into a kind of a seating area that worked really, it worked much better as a seating area, in fact. And we'll talk about dimensions and the limitations of dimensions later as well. Then a friend of mine came along and said, oh, I'm uh, setting up a garage and um, I need some um, office space. What would you suggest? And I went, containers. <laughs> Oh, well, so that's Glenn Power, the car guy who's on here. And so his first one came from the same guy who did my um, my pergola. Um, he's done a couple more, actually, when he set up um, the second Powerworks in um, DIP. He got another two, I think. And um, so he's, he's a complete container convert as well. But the real key with containers is they don't limit your imagination from what you can do with them. Mm. You know, the start point for me was um, with with my own build was I wanted. I, I kind of initially started with I want I want a pergola. Okay, so let's 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 jump into a very particular area, and this right, is okay. you got a backyard, and you're thinking, look, we want to have a place with our barbecue. We want to have maybe a little bar set up. We want to have it could be anything. It could be a little rec area. Well, well, you know what? Let's just go because the majority of people here, I think, are, are listening in are going to be in two camps. They're either going to be in the commercial camp, or alternatively, they're going to be in the useful for home camp. Okay, okay, so. Let's start off with useful for home camp and let, let's go yeah. initially with uh, one application, which would be what we did, uh, which was the kind of pergola design. Okay, okay, quick question. Yeah, yeah, go for it. When we talk about containers, there's three options as I see it. And, and, and you used a very particular option with the pergola. Yes. Brand new container, container that's been decommissioned, or talk to the people who make containers and get something custom built. Yeah. So that was the option I went for. The custom um, built. The custom built one. Uh, so for my one, uh, let, so let's talk about those three options. So first of all, new. Yeah. Um, they are available. Right now, there is a massive shortage of containers in the world. 
Okay, we've got a real problem with that. Uh, most of them, from the sounds of it, are in docks in the US, which, based on um, the uh, the Beatles that have been trying to ship recently, uh, it seems like that is about a four to five month wait to get those all sorted. Okay, out. I'll pause for a second. So, I got a Beatle question. Mm, okay, is is one of your Beatle guys? Does he live in Murdoff? Because there is a guy around the corner from me who has two Beatles sitting in his driveway, bricks under behind the wheel so they don't roll under the thing. No license plates on them, and I thought. I wonder if this is one of your guys. No, I don't think so. No, I know where all mine are. Okay, I'll send you pictures of these two. Yeah. They're they're sitting there. The one issue is most of the ones here are automatic, which you blow. Uh, You put it on a racetrack, you blow it inside that one session. I'll look in the window to see. If they're manual, I want his address and his pin immediately. I will be there within 30 minutes. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Right. So flipping back. Flipping back. So containers, new ones. So the great thing about new ones is, A, they are painted, so they're ready to go. They're not rusted. There you go. They're not patched. And they're smart. Now, if you think about a commercial application, a lot of the time, if you are customer facing, you need something that looks pretty sparkly. Yeah. So that's your option, hmm. without a doubt. Okay. The are, sec- they, are they expensive? Uh, yes, okay. they are. Yeah. I mean, to give you an idea, second hand one, like I bought a 40 foot, uh, so currently in, at, um, we will fix it HQ, uh, we have a 40 foot container. We had a 20, here you go. This is the yeah. classic scenario, isn't it? <laughs> Ooh, containers are expensive at the moment. I think we paid six and a half thousand for the 20 foot, uh, six months ago, maybe a little bit more. Anyway, within th- two months, we'd filled it. I'm like, oh, for goodness sake, you complete fool. <laughs> Anyway, it turned out that because the uh, the supply had, and we got we got containers that can be shipped oh, as well. Okay, so, so you could put them on a truck, you could put them on a boat, etc. Yes, exactly. Okay. So they were still airtight. It's kind mm. of the, the definitions that they use. And uh, so we sold back our twenty foot container, but because it had the prices of containers had gone up at the time. We actually got the full six and a half thousand back, even including all of the logistics and moving it from wow. the supplier. Wow. And then we bought a 40 foot container, um, which again, we filled in the peak of winter when we, uh, so at that point we take um, teams off the road, they're going on holiday. We still want the vans to be able to rotate. So we'll take all the parts out and we'll store them in the, in the container. So, uh, and that was, actually, I absolutely, right now, container prices for that 40 foot, uh, which is a really good 40 foot, would be about 12 to 12 and a half thousand dirhams right. for something decent. Hmm. Uh, and we got him down quite a way. Um, just, you know, we're going to buy loads of these. <laughs> something along those lines. <laughs> and um, and the fact that he wanted that 20 foot, he he obviously had a market for the 20 foot. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, I think we paid nine in the end, nine, nine okay. and a half, something like that. Yeah. Um, do, do, now, quick question: Municipality-wise and things, do you need permissions to dump a container in your parking lot? In we your- got, we actually got the um, the um, Dubai Investment Park. No, it wasn't Dubai Investment Park. It's our the managing agent just changed from our landlord, and they um, they complained. You know, what, oh, are you, what, what? Are you doing, what are you doing parking uh, parking this in um, in the communal car park? To which I sent him a, col- uh, a copy of my contract. Yeah. I said, "No, actually, this is my car park, <laughs> not yours." <laughs> so off you go, and that was kind of dealt with. So yeah. definitely, on a wider perspective, for um, for most people, yes, the that is a massive, massive problem, yeah. which actually is the reason why, for mine, I went custom. Okay. okay, so this is the pergola we're talking. Yeah, so I'm in the Arabian ranches, and uh, there housing is, development. If you're not yeah, aware, housing development. Now, if you imagine to be able to get a container into a garden, uh, you have no option apart from a mahusive crane. Yeah, and you got the truck that's driving in, and you're yeah. going to have neighbors complaining. Yeah, exactly, and yeah. you wouldn't get EMR approval for that. Yeah. You, you get rejected, you know, straight off. So the way that we did it was slightly different, which was I got a custom-made second-hand base. So just the ah. base level, okay? So what did they do? Just take apart all the rest of the container? It was a, it was a shot container okay. where the base was all right and there was nothing else that was really useful to it. So they sold the rest for scrap, cut off the bottom, and that was the start okay. point. Oh, that's a neat idea. Thank you. Um, <laughs> then for all of the rest of the components, it was all completely Eyes. So I wanted just the uh, the outer shell without any of the walls in it. Mm. I also wanted it higher because okay. the big problem with containers is uh, the height requirements for building or for use generally. Yeah. So I think it's seven foot seven foot six is the standard height. Now the reality of what people see out and about with containers is 
that, that standard 40 foot, 20 foot container. The one you actually want is called a high cube, which uh, is nine foot six, some, somewhere around right. there, I think. So it gives you that height space, if you were building with it, to use insulation, which you desperately need in this environment. And so what you do, you basically need insulation anywhere. You need it for the heat yeah, and you point. need it for the cold. Yeah, you do. Um, and, and so if you have a seven foot ceiling and then you put some insulation in, which means you're going to be putting some, some wood inside of it to yeah. support stuff, you're cutting down your height. Exactly. Dramatically. Yeah, yeah. So basically, they say once you put insulation into uh, into a container, a standard container, you've only got about seven foot of of height left. Yeah. Well, if you imagine, I'm six foot three, somewhere around yeah. there. So, uh, and I get excited. <laughs> Can you imagine that moment where I'm really excited and it's just gone right? I'm headbutting that <laughs> ceiling. Let's be honest. One minor jump and I'm I'm knocked out. Which it'd be highly entertaining to get on camera, but still. Uh, you need to be a little bit careful of that. So yeah. high cube is the way. Now, back to my pergola. I didn't, I want, the whole idea of a pergola is to give you that kind of sense of, oh, we're covered, we're protected, but we're still uh, open yeah. and, and available. So I decided that actually a high cube wasn't high enough. <laughs> of course not. No, obviously. <laughs> so at that point, I had a chat with my mate, the um, the container guy, and he, he said, well, you know what? We have all of these as, as just um, lengths. Lengths yeah. of material. Okay. So, therefore, you can go whatever height you want. So, I added oh, another yeah. foot on a high cube. Okay. And took it to about 10 foot. And then um, I, I then put back on, you know, one of the things that really gives you the sense of it being a, a cube are the attachment corner points that you've right. got all the way around it. There's some technical word, but we don't need to know that. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, and so we, I then got those back on and on the end of each of these, but it was all designed to fit through an 80 centimeter gate. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. And at that point, because I have proved that the it is a non-permanent structure because everything got through that 80 foot gate, uh-huh. I didn't even bother with approvals. Ah. Yeah. I made sure that the basics of construction uh, within a development, which are two meters from a wall um, and uh, non-permanent, therefore, are being looked at. Yeah. And um, they constructed the whole thing in about three hours. Wow. Yeah, it was really, really that's, quick. That's impressive. From delivery. So um, over the minute, that wasn't even that expensive, to be fair. Um, and I actually managed to sell it for more than I bought it for, which is even better. <laughs> How did you deal with electricity and things in it? Did I didn't need it. Okay. I didn't need it. Because it was one. all open, so you just... Yeah. Um, actually, did I, I think... Actually, no, I did have electricity. I forgot. So what I actually did in the end was I just needed some lights in it. Um, yeah. So I actually just extended the uh, perimeter cabling that I'd used for um, the the perimeter lights in that property, yeah. and then just put a spur straight out of one of the okay. uh, the lights to give me another um, four lights on each of the pillars, just a, a down light or an up lighter. So the Easy. Yeah, so um, I then put kind of a trellis into the back. It was kind of custom, custom made trellis that was there, um, and it did look absolutely utterly stunning. And the other lovely thing about it was um, that even um, even after what four years we had it, and it got a bit rusty in places. Yeah. Uh, and we'll talk about the steel that it's made from, and the design of it is supposed to do that bizarrely. But uh, after four years, it was literally a sundown job. I got my boys to repaint it in three hours, and it was back to brand new. And at that point, as we were about to be leaving, sold it straight yeah. um, straight off. There it went, and um, yeah, that was that done. Now, here's the question: you you loved this pergola made from a container. You moved. You didn't put up another one made from a container. Why? No. Why? Yeah, that was an interesting one. Uh, so a couple of things. First of all, one of the big points with containers is the limitations of the shape. Mm. They Your are depth square. is only seven foot six, I think it is. I need to recheck that. But we're around the seven foot four to seven foot eight range, if I remember rightly. And um, so that is actually a really limiting factor. Mm. If you imagine the... Uh, so the way we had it towards the end was as um, a, a kind of... Uh, a social seating setup. Yeah. And what it meant was that we kind of had to, you had to kind of <laughs> move your, he says moving his head without the microphone. Well done, you genius. So it means that you kind of, you're constantly at a bit of an angle and it yeah. felt tight. Ah. So, and then we had the same issue with the bar. So when we had the bar, we had a long, thin right. bar, which had five seats on each side. And again, it was just slightly too narrow for what we wanted. Okay. 
We could have added another in front of the first one. We could have had another container, and away we go. But you've obviously got the additional cost that would come from that, et cetera, et cetera. And then it would probably take too much space. Yeah. So it's kind of a little bit of an oddity in terms of um, in terms of that width measurement. And it's something that people need to think about. You've either got to love or people are going to love or they're going to hate the look of containers. And yeah. it's that very industrial kind of exterior look unless of course you you alter that via paint or a covering yeah you can clad it n- yeah. really easily right let's talk about rust next because yeah. that's an important it must one. always seem rusty yeah well there's a reason for that it's called corten steel um, okay. which is what containers are, are are made from now if you imagine the life of a container as it's designed to do it is on the ocean waves with water that is quite salty Okay. Now, the way Corten steel is designed, it is designed to initially oxidize rust, Mm -hmm. but it oxidizes to a very, very thin level. So the actual structural integrity of the steel itself is absolutely fine behind it. Okay. Okay. That is how it's designed to operate, which I think is, is really clever. Now, the problem is the aesthetic of that if that is an issue for you, is uh, can be problematic. However, this Corten steel that was basically designed for containers is now used. You know all of these fancy pants places that have that rusty metal yes. look on their front entrance? Yeah. That is Corten steel. Ah, yeah, okay. so that's what it's designed to do. So it gives you that rust effect. and um, But behind all of that, it's absolutely fine. Mm. So that's core 10 for you. Uh, now, where were we going with the... Pre- you made a point previously, and I totally missed it. Well, that you can clad them in that kind oh, of stuff. Oh, yes, too. cladding. That was yeah. it. Okay, so you're absolutely right. So paint-wise, did you know there is actually a specific <laughs> no. paint for containers? <laughs> no, but I, 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 I figured there must be. Yeah, um, so there's a specific paint for containers, um, which is designed um, to be able to attach effectively to core 10. Lots of colours available? Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, okay. well, it's, it's based on RAL, R-A-L, okay. the main um, sort of colour matrix that you okay. can get. So you can get any colour you want, right. really, um, easily enough. Enough. So you've got that. But then cladding. So one of the things that I was kind of thinking about when I was going through this whole process was I, mean, I genuinely have always wanted like a, an office in the garden and a 20 footer would be absolutely ideal yeah. for that. But I know that it would be banned in the ranches if I'd left it exposed right. and um, they, would, they would have a massive issue with that. Um, so instead, I was going to uh, just get like sawn sawn wood and mm. give it more of a um, you know a timber cabin like feel a to it, barn boards or something. like Yeah, that. barn Tim- boards exactly. Timber cabin, that's nice. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of that. And then with an almighty massive window, because you, yeah. the big problem with these is they're quite dark when you use mm. them just with the, the you know door and, um, yeah. and very little else. So I really wanted to do that one. Um, it got vetoed by Her Majesty, obviously. Um, but, you know, as most things are. Yeah. And some things you've just got to sacrifice to get the ones you really want. Well, it sounds like Glenn has gone the opposite route. So we got the pergola. You have these ideas and do things in the backyard. Yeah. And then we've got the, just. It, it just makes total sense. You've got a, a warehouse. You've got an office you're putting into a warehouse. You've got, you, you've got a car garage like Glenn does. Yeah. And you, you've got his car garage is essentially in a big warehouse. Yeah. And he needs office space. Well, the point I made to Glenn was um, there is every chance in the future that your landlord's going to be a bit of a pain in the backside and yeah. you, you're going to need to move. If you've built in an office, you have no option but to walk away from that and do it all over again. Mm. With a container, yeah, you'd need to take out the, the windows and that kind of thing, but it comes with you. It yeah. is possible to move it without too many issues whatsoever. And that is magic if you've got a business because um, that's the whole, you know, yeah. the whole massive cost saving for a fit out of um, of a container. So that was kind of the start point for him. And then when he realized that he could kind of customize it in various different ways. So he's got one, I think he's got 140, which is the main uh, kind of customer area. He's got another 10 that's on the side of that downstairs, which is his office. He's got, I think he's got, he's got another one upstairs there, which is uh, for parts and that kind of stuff as well. So he's he's really been able to use it. That's one of the great things, the versatility of these things. And again, he bought secondhand because he decided that, you know, for his um, kind of uh, rough and ready aesthetic, um, that it would work. And, and it has. It's yeah. a really great space that he's got available. So then when it came to DIP, it was a no-brainer for him that he, he did something similar. But again, for that one, it's less customer-facing. So a little... Um, um, 20 foot office downstairs but the parts uh, for Borg and mm. Beck and the work he's doing there uh, 
um, is more important upstairs. So he's got a, I think he's actually got the same again upstairs for that um, mm. for that also. So yeah, they work they work really well for him, and um, and I'm, I'm you know I'm glad that that's uh, that all mm. worked out. When you see people talking about making homes out of containers, what do you think? Not as cheap as you thought it was. Mm. It's a great idea, yeah. um, but there's kind of two different perspectives to that. If you're looking and A, if you're capable at DIY, and secondly, you are looking for the absolute cheapest place to live, then you could do something on a real shoestring, but it's going to yeah. be basic, basic, to say yeah. the least. So living off the grid would be yeah. a great, oh, yeah. great way Absolutely. to have a container home. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you're looking for something for a family, yeah. <laughs> and you're looking for an element of comfort, I'm not sure that it will give you mm. um, that much... Um, cost saving versus traditional methods um, because whilst it's very strong I mean to give you an idea of how strong containers are you can stack them fully like fully loaded eight high mm. which is just insane yeah. in my book you know and I think each one can weigh 25 tons okay, I think it's the, the max weight you can put in one of these again don't quote me on that I didn't check that one before we, um, we went on air uh, but uh, they can certainly take a huge amount of weight. Yeah. So, but then when you go to construction and the amount of weight that you're using with construction, almost universally, if you're going to do anything other than the absolute basics, you are going to need additional structural steel, especially in the floors, ah. um, to be able to um, to to maintain the rigidity that you need. Hmm. And then when, as soon as you start putting windows and, and other things into it, you're reducing the rigidity. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the corrugated effect is actually not there just for aesthetics. That adds a huge amount of strength to the main structure. Okay. Yeah. So that's something to really keep your, keep your mind on because they're being sold as, hey, these can be a really affordable way to do it. Yeah. But to get it to that finished product, that could lead to a lot of costs. The other thing that was fascinating for me was we were coming back from the Jebel Ali Resort um, uh-huh. over Easter, and we went round the road that goes back from the Jebel Ali Resort comes right around the edge of the Jebel Ali Freezer and, and, yeah. um, and where they're doing all the loading up of the containers. And then there was this back pile of smashed up containers that quite clearly have been dropped. Oh, no. Yeah. How they, was, how, how'd they look? Bad, <laughs> like really bad. I wonder like, how they were dropped from. Ouch. Well, I know what it looked like. It looked like you know those those big machines that um, yeah. basically grab them on each corner, and yeah. then uh, they kind of wheel them off from you know to mm-hmm. from the ship. It let go. It looked like it let go. I wouldn't doubt it. And those things can be pretty high when they're pulling it off a ship. Yeah. Well, that's the whole point. There is no way on this earth that those had a little bump. You know, those fell from Yikes. height. Yikes. So it was fascinating to see. I mean, we were like, <laughs> my eyes were out on stalks. Thank God that wasn't inside one of those or nearby. Being a longshoreman is a dangerous job if yeah. you're around containers. I mean, yeah, um, truly. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, you know, it's, it's fascinating to see yeah. that, uh, that even though they are this incredibly strong, they still have limitations as well. The other thing is that you talked about, I want to circle back to this, is you talked about buying used. And if you're buying a used container, keeping an eye on how much patching has been done to it and yes. things like that. Well, it's not just ugly. Um, the other side of that is it, um, it, it kind of adds uh, an area where it's likely to rust first in future. Mm. Welding by its very definition um, can, uh, can be a, a weakness in terms of that. So, uh, and again, it may well be that they painted the outside, but they didn't paint the inside. Right. And so um, if, it's, if it's open to the elements, it will oxidize, it will rust, yeah. and uh, it will bubble straight back through. Mm. So, and and what's know, been stored in the thing? What it was carrying? It. Yeah, actually, that's really important. So inside a container, the floor is normally marine-grade ply. Okay. But that marine grade ply is um, almost universally uh, pressure treated with insecticide. Oh, yeah. didn't know that. Yes. Okay. So this insecticide is not something that you want or it's not generally recommended that it is used for any kind of habitation. So the first thing that you would need to do is to take it out and put something different in there. Mm. So that's a big. That's a that's a little bit of a job as well. Yeah. Well, I took my so from for the floor that we had, we took all of that out and I put twenty two mil marine grey ply straight back in. Yeah. Uh, actually, didn't last very well. I've got to say, after three or four oh, years, it got right. a bit crunchy. Why is that? Um, Why do you think? 
Humidity poor, underneath? No, I think poor quality um, Marine grade. board. Yeah, I don't think the board was of the level it should have been, um, which is slightly irritating. But, um, <laughs> you know... I, I, it's not cheap marine grade plywood either. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. But again, you know, we got new um, new stuff down there and I retreated it. So even though it's supposed to be treated, we treated it again yeah. um, and then put the floor back down before I sold it. So... Um, it, it, it's one of those, isn't it, where it, there's always going to be something. So. Yeah. And we'd taken the roof off, if you can imagine. So it was very exposed to mm. Um, mm. Uh, to the elements. In fact, we'd use sail shades over the top of it. Oh, okay. I, got, I got custom-made sail oh, shades. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it was. It, it did look good. Um, but again, you know, you asked me why, why we didn't this time around. Yeah. And it wasn't just sizing. It was a, a mixture of being there, done that. Yeah. Um, Actually, that's rubbish. Natalie put a foot down. She said, <laughs> she said, now. You know what? You've had your fun. You've done your little project. Now grow up. Well, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I get what Natalie's saying is that, yes, there, there's a lot of opportunity with them, but they, there's an aesthetic element. Yeah. And sometimes even with shades and cladding and, you know, plants and lighting. It's, it's still industrial, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's still a container. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of go, doesn't match the house. Does yes. It? Well, actually, it does match our house. Our, our, our house is pretty brutalist at the best of times. The wonders of yeah, prefabs yeah, yeah, of heels. Yeah. But um, no, I, I, I take I take a point on board. Um, the new one again, custom made, much larger, um, to say the least. And uh, you know, you've got options. You've got yeah. three options. I mean, you've got the container option, you've got the wood option, you've got the aluminium option. Right. And uh, for us, the idea this time round was uh, we are going to be at this property for quite a while, uh, and on that basis, if we are investing in something, it's a decent investment for the time that we're there. Yeah. Interestingly enough, the way that we designed the aluminium, um, the aluminium pergola, it, it is designed again that we could take it apart and move it if we needed yeah. to, but it is more permanent without a doubt than the uh, than the last mm. one was. Why? Why not wood? What was the, the thinking there? Oh god, it's just yeah. it is the cheapest, which is great, um, and again you can use Maranti hardwood for yeah, yeah. it. Um, but a combination of uh, Maranti is naturally very dark. Um, if we wanted to make it light. We would need to paint it. If you mm. paint it, it then needs annual maintenance, if not right. biannual, if you're really lucky. I like those thatch roofs, though, that I see on a lot of wooden ones. Yeah, well, actually, we put that over the okay. top of the pergola, okay. um, which was an odd... It was a kind of a, a, a little... No, in fact, no, maybe I did design this before we before we finally put it on. But what we realised was the aerofoils that we designed for the entire yeah. roof structure, in certain lights... Uh, it, w- it wouldn't have done very much. Ah. So what I did in the end was, rather than it being thatch, we used bamboo. And I got bamboo sheets that I, I oh. put onto a frame and What's then attached like? it down to uh, to the rest of it. So bamboo sheets as in the little round things of bamboo made into a sheet? Yes. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Uh, yeah, I've never heard of this. And no, it wasn't. It was just straight out of our, our heads. We'd done it. We, we did a really successful um, bamboo Maranti framed uh, fence that that works really, really well. Yeah. I think I have to be honest and say it's not as effective um, on the roof of the uh, pergola. A couple of things we didn't think about, uh, which were uh, the amount of dirt that was going to be on there. Yeah. Uh, which means it needs a lot of cleaning, uh, yeah. especially after rain and that kind of stuff. Um, and secondly, uh, the bamboo, actually, it's not really really our fault, but the bamboo that we got wasn't as dry as we would have ideally liked, so mm. it's got a little bit mildewy in places. Okay. But the nice thing is we can rip it off without any real yeah. effect, and you know, to redo it is a thousand dirhams, so <laughs> if we decide to go down the same route. Um, I might probably... Um, um, no, maybe not. I was kind of thinking of other options then. I was about to say um, maybe I put cell shades over the top yeah. of it just to uh, kind of give us that uh, that effect. But again, because it's a flat roof by its nature, if yeah. you put something like that over it without much angle, then there's a very good chance that it's going to still seep through and still look yeah. pretty horrific. So I need to think about that more. Aesthetics are a challenge. Yes, they are. But, um, also, we made a, uh, as we've mentioned before, we... <laughs> We, James, made a design error yeah. um, so that they are full width uh, aerofoils rather than half width, which is how it should have been. Mm-hmm. And as a result of that, it kind of aesthetically, aesthetically, no, aesthetically, it, lo- it looks better as a result. But yeah. 
practically speaking, it's, um, it is a little less practical than it should be. And that's the challenge when we're talking, whether it's containers or whatever you're, you're building with. Yeah. There's the aesthetic and the practical. Yeah. And you need to find yourself somewhere in between. And you won't always get it right. That's no. the other thing. You're, <laughs> yeah. you're kind of looking for 80, 80 90%. Yeah. Uh, mind you, we did absolutely utterly ace our new bed. Which has oh, okay. just been okay. Tell, oh. So where did the so you you were getting a new bed? You decided to go custom. Yes. You also went with the custom mattress too, right? Yes, we did. And that yeah. arrived a okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. No. Oh, well, so this is this now. What did you do with the sheets? Because I remember there was talk about the custom sheets. Work as well. this out. Okay. So t- uh, just to go reverse back to the beginning, we are a very odd family. So we go upstairs. <laughs> you know, people right now, their eyes are rolling back and going, you don't say. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. So basically around half past seven every night, we all go upstairs. Now we are um, two adults, two kids, 10 and seven, and two crazy dogs. So as of 7.30, um, that's us done downstairs. Yeah. So we all go upstairs to our room to then watch normally about 45 minutes more um, TV together, talk through the day, all the usual stuff. And we did have a king size bed, which is a 180, 180 by two meter standard size yeah. that everybody has. Now, the problem is now the kids are getting bigger. You couldn't really fit both of them in the middle. And then we got another dog, Paddington. Uh-huh. And then at that point, trying to get both of them kind of on the bed because they don't want to be away from you is a yeah. real problem. Yeah. So it's obvious, isn't it, that you would therefore go, you know what, this bed just isn't big enough. Oh, but this is the biggest standard size. Let's see what else is possible. <laughs> so we then went for, uh, so we, we decided that we needed a uh, 40 centimeters additional. So we've gone 240 by 200, uh-huh. uh, which is an in-between. Turns out it's in-between a large emperor and a Caesar. Did you know that size no, I did no, not did know I. that there was an emperor or a Caesar. Yeah. So a Caesar would have been 260. A, a large emperor is, well, actually different definitions. So it could well be uh, <laughs> like a, because again, did you know that America and Europe have different definitions of each name that's there? Oh, of course they do. Yeah. So in America, a uh, an emperor is two meters. In Europe, a large emperor is two meters. A large and an emperor. emperor is 180, <laughs> which is also known as a king size. <laughs> right. Uh, sorry, as a, su- no, a king size in certain areas and yeah. super king in others. It's utterly messed up. So all of the names need to be redone now. All you naming people, sort it out. Uh, but ours was custom. Yeah. Now, what we actually worked out was if we went for large emperor bedding, uh-huh for uh, the duvet cover, the duvet, and then obviously pillows are uh, standard anyway, the overhang was loads to be able to okay. um, uh, to work with our size of bed. They basically have an overhang that's designed to be like 50, 60 centimetres. And actually, you only need 20 yeah. maximum. So that worked out brilliantly. Yeah. Natalie then walked into Debenhams in more of the Emirates, to this enormous sale, pretty much on only the stuff that we needed. So it's wow. like, oh, get in. So it was peanuts and really good, you know. Some, uh, so beautiful- did you end up getting the emperor or the Caesar? So we ended up getting the large emperor, uh-huh. European stuff, uh-huh. Debenhams, uh, the large emperor um, for both the duvet and duvet cover. Aha, uh-huh. okay. okay. Good. Now, she took a gamble, which I thought was a very dangerous gamble, <laughs> which was to go flat sheet large emperor as well uh-huh. because the flat sheets traditionally are slightly larger well they are they're five centimeters larger than the fitted sheet on those oh wait on oh, no the large so large emperor on this one is 215 ours is 220 that's where the problem lies an emperor was two meters there we go i've got it now so what actually happened in the end was the technical definition said that based on the height of our mattress, which is a 32 centimetre mattress, we were going to have five centimetres only going underneath the mattress. Right. What I'd forgotten, which worked incredibly <laughs> well in our favour on this occasion was... Oh, you're lucky. I know, I was really lucky. <laughs> was 18 centimetres of the mattress is um, on the side of the um, uh, the side pillar. So it fits oh, okay. into yeah, the yeah, bed. for sure. Yeah, right? yeah. The other lucky thing was I had made a rough calculation, which was I would like a two centimeter spread around each side. So okay. that when you sit on the mattress, it has a little bit of flex space. Mm, yeah. Okay. And also, I don't know how accurate they are in manufacturing the um, uh, the mattress. 
we put the mattress on, it fitted just. So it's right up against okay. every single corner. Yeah. Which turned out that it worked beautifully because now we just shove the flat sheet down the sides where uh, where the side those side pillars are, yeah. and it works beautifully. Where'd you get the bed so, made? Uh, the bed was made by Jamara Carpen- uh, okay. Carpenter that does pretty much all of our stuff. Oak Moranti? Yeah, oak. Okay. So this was a simple definition. So the brief to them actually <laughs> it took about five iterations of design to get to exactly where we needed to be. Five, five. Yeah, it was, <laughs> and it was. I want to be able to do backflips into bed. I'm never technically able to do it anymore. But I want to be able to do backflips into bed and this bed's every night and this bed still needs to be fine in 30 years' time. I can just I can just hear it. <laughs> Natalie, get the door open. I'm going to do backflips into the bed tonight. Okay, well, actually, I did an enormous front dive onto... This is hilarious. Actually. Right, so the old bed that we got for our wedding was Ikea. Yeah. Okay? Oh, no. Oh, and no. And I did it... <laughs> And I didn't do a backflip. I did a front flip, but a, but a big jump. Yeah. Okay. Like a belly flop. Hands yeah, yeah, and yeah. legs extended. Yeah. Yeah. And I went straight through it. Okay. <laughs> and you can imagine she was totally unimpressed. So at that moment, there's only one thing to do. And I'd, I'd literally I'd snap the... Um, and you hear them snapping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah but yeah. a whole lot. Yeah, all you know? at once. And to be fair, I was at my heaviest at the time, at about 120 kilos. So I did what every bloke would do in this situation. Next day, went back to Ikea, bought the new slats, put them down. Next night, <laughs> you've got no again. option, have you? Right? You've got to do it again. I told you they were defective. <laughs> did the jump, landed, snapped them again. Two nights running, 80 dirhams down the drain there and then. Right? So, the first night, she was extremely unimpressed. Okay? Yeah. The second, the second night, you would have thought she'd have seen the funny side. Not in the slightest. Absolutely not in the slightest. <laughs> so I basically managed to do the second time round because it was only 24 hours later. Yeah. I put the uh, the old slats um, by the bin to be taken away, but they hadn't been taken away. So therefore, at kind of eight o'clock at night, I've got the rest of the family, the rest of the family in the old bed. Now we didn't fit in the 180 centimetres, so now, now they're down to 90. The rest of the family there looking at me like I'm a piece of whatever. And um, so I obviously did what any dad would do in this situation. I got the old one and I got the new one. And they're all stapled with um, right. kind of lines down yeah. a pair of scissors. And I literally mm-hmm. custom custom put enough down there to um, so that way it would uh, it would it would support me perfectly. perfectly. Anyway, I then took a look at uh, the rest of the family. I went, see, I told you so. I told you it was going to be fine. <laughs> you know, forty five minutes later, I was just uh, just about uh, salvaged it. <laughs> and then the next day, I did what every bloke would do in this situation which is take the practical perspective. So my petite wife yeah. is is just a very um, a very light, you know, mid 50 kilo lady and I'm 120. And we very rarely move that mattress. Uh-huh. So what do you do? Uh, <laughs> you swap them, swap don't you? Them, yeah. You swap them. <laughs> yeah. So the word from Natalie is I'm just going shopping, look after the dogs. I'm like I've got a plan here. I know what I'm going to do. So get the mattress off now you can't get the mattress all the way because i know fully well with my back i've got no chance of getting the whole thing on so yeah. you've got to leave it so that it's 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 <laughs> yeah. teaching on the end there yeah but it's not the whole thing hasn't come off okay right. yeah yeah you've also got to think which shop is she going to <laughs> how long is she gonna be how long is she gonna so you be? start the stopwatch yeah yeah okay so now one of the things that really irritates me about natalie and there's, there's plenty of things but one of the things that really irritates me is the way she shops Okay, she can walk in, walk into a shop and go. Oh, the aura's wrong. It's not here. <laughs> Whatever I've come from, it's not here. The aura's wrong, right? Alternatively, if she is going shopping for food stuff, doesn't matter how much stuff we need. Twenty minutes tops, without a doubt. Wow. Okay, so I'm like, oh man, I'm right up against this. So I had to take the first one off. Now, obviously, the first one is still attached properly. So they yeah. to to stop it all kind of joining together because they, yeah. it's still attached with the uh, the strips. They attached down the first ones, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, obviously, on my side, I didn't have to worry about that right. because I'd just gone right the way through them. Yeah, yeah. So there was no issue. But now, because I'm swapping all of them, I've got to do the ones that I hadn't taken off from my side. I've then got to do Natalie's ones and do the whole flip. I literally managed it with about five minutes to spare. Wow. Right? Yeah, I know. It's brilliant. Yeah. So, um, so uh, we go six, seven months, and, um, and everything's absolutely, absolutely great. And then the kids are bouncing up and down on the bed. And they've run upstairs while I'm still getting things organised downstairs. And then I hear this. Colin! 
here. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. My side's gone as well. I'm like, what, what do you mean your side's gone as well? Well, you know how I gave you all that hassle over the fact that you were, you were big and fat when you did that jump? Well, my side can't even handle the two kids combined weight, what, 30, 30, 35 kilos. I went, no, that's absolutely awful, love. I I'm, I'm, cannot believe it. But you know what? You were, you were quite offensive about this six months ago when, when I went through them. Yes, I was. Well, you know what? You're going to have to go now and, um, and get another set, you know, like you did the second time to replace your side. Oh, yeah. Right. So, so off I went, got another set, and that was the end of that issue. Yeah. It's classic. Welcome to Marital Bliss. That's how we roll. Oh, man. I, I love how we went from containers to the custom bed. Oh, oh the, so the custom bed's done. You were just saying oh, you love yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the custom bed is done. Yeah. So uh, solid oak throughout. Um, I could backflip if I wanted to. Uh-huh. And mind you, additional things. So I learned from that incident um, to not use slats. Yeah. That was the first yeah. thing. They're and affordable, but... Yeah, it is. So um, instead, we've gone with um, 22 mil um, uh, yeah, uh, ply in there, uh, which is great. But the other thing that you need in this situation is, so we've got the combination of a heavy mattress, uh-huh. I mean, it's 32, 32 centimeters, it's a beast, and uh, four, four people in it, two adults, yeah. two kids, and two dogs, because obviously they're the heavy bit, maybe yeah. not, tiny. And so uh, we added additional legs in as well. Ah, so I've, I've done a complete line. Not Normally you just have that one in the middle yeah. on a big bed, wouldn't you? On that, yeah. I've got a complete line of them going oh, good. down. good. What so, a great idea. Yeah. So there should be absolutely no chance um, of those going anywhere. So total success. Unbelievable. So happy with it. Wow. Lovely. And it's all custom made. Yeah. See, it was one of those. Um, it turns out that my... And it, it, it was a present which is yeah, lovely as dad. well. It was a present from my dad, bless him. Uh, well, you know, this is, it's so, um, it's so lovely. And, um, but the other side of it is I worked out later on, it was a tax write off. <laughs> There's so much money that he's able to send out of country every year. And he's like, Oh, I've just sent you, uh, I sent you a present. Anyway, it arrived. I was like, gee whiz, you did send a present, didn't you? Well, thanks dad. But that's a bit OTT. Oh no, it's the least I could do. And then, um, uh, my sister rang up and um, and we were talking and she said, uh, yeah, did Dad, did Dad do the same for you? I'm like, yeah. And she said, well, you do understand that that's the maximum taxable limit. I was like, oh, right. Oh, okay. So yes, custom beds are not cheap. Let's be, yeah. let's be brutally honest about that. But we have something that we are blissfully happy with. And for me, the importance of um, spending money is one of two things, which is either you're going to use it loads, and we use that every single night, yeah. not just for sleeping, but also it, it's, it's our quality family time where we just have um, yeah. time for the six of us. Uh, which is wonderful. And then um, all the second scenario, um, when it comes to uh, uh, to spending money, which is as a bloke, you just like to own things, don't you? Yeah, you just like to own things. And, yeah. and worst, worst case scenario, you could always put one of these in a container. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And it seems highly likely this, this one.